For Dr. Chambers MBA Econ 601 class, we will be discussing the trade weighted exchange rate as an economic indicator. Presenting this information is Caroline Heyman, Gary Cox, and Samantha Chiriaco. First, we are going to talk about the history of the trade weighted exchange rate. In 1973, it was called the US dollar index and it used six major world currencies, which included the euro, the Japanese yen, the Canadian dollar, the British pound, the Swedish krona, and the Swiss franc. In 1998, the U.S. Federal Reserve Board responded to the implementation of the euro, of the euro by adopting the trade-weighted U.S. dollar index, also known as the broad index. The broad index more accurately reflects current U.S. trade patterns and helps keep pace with new developments in U.S. trade. The broad index uses 26 currencies. When the index was introduced, the 26 countries accounted for over 90% of total U.S. imports and exports. FRED, also known as the Federal Reserve Economic Data, publishes the data daily, weekly, monthly, and annually. What is the trade weighted exchange rate? According to The Economist, a country's trade weighted exchange rate is an average of its bilateral exchange rates weighted by the amount of trade with each country. Basically, the amount of trade we participate in with a country is given meaning or weight when analyzing the exchange rates between the US dollar and the country in question. For example, if the majority of a country's trade is with Japan, then the movement of its currency against the yen will be given greater importance in the overall measurement of the exchange rate's value. This overall value is normally expressed as an index level that changes on a daily basis. So how to interpret? If the index is on the rise, other things being equal, the purchasing power of that currency is also on the rise. The use of trade weights in a globalized economy is potentially misleading. The amount of value added content in exports destined for a country may deviate significantly from the gross value of exports shipped to that country. So what does this tell us? This determines the US dollar purchasing power against other currencies. It tells us whether or not the U.S. dollar is appreciating or de depreciating against those foreign currencies. If the U.S. dollar appreciates, U.S. imports are less expensive and U.S. exports are more expensive. However, vice versa, if U.S. dollar is depreciating, U.S. imports are more expensive while the exports are less expensive. Nominal exchange rates, put simply, measure how much of one currency can be traded in another country for their currency. However, a real exchange rate is very similar to a nominal exchange rate, except it measures goods and services of one country against goods and services of another country. As you can see, from January to July 2014, the indicator stays pretty consistent. Then, in July 2014, the indicator starts to rise substantially. It is our theory that you see the spike in the U.S. dollar index because our close trading partners in Europe and Asia, their currencies are depreciating. For the most part, from July 2014 to November 2014, the trade weighted exchange rate increased. This means that over the past four months, the U.S. dollar has appreciated and the purchasing power of the dollar became greater. If this trend continues, the U.S. dollar will continue to gain purchasing power and appreciate against the other currencies. Through our research, we've concluded that the trade weighted exchange rate is a coinciding economic indicator therefore making it a dependable source for determining if the U.S. is experiencing a recession, recovery, or expansion. And these are our sources. Thank you for watching our presentation and thank you for your time.